This is Sad Kitty, lots of kitties here. This is a no sew pattern and I would suggest that you are at least an advanced beginner because there is a few things going on in this pattern with color changes and bobbles. Kitty is about two inches tall, about four inches long, made in the super bulky Chanel yarn. Feel free to use any color you'd like. I would just suggest doing a main color and then a contrasting color. Hi guys, it's Katie from Yarn Society and if you're new around here, I've been creating patterns for about 10 years and I love sharing them with you guys. If you're looking for the written pattern, you can go to yarnsociety.com where they are all free. Okay, on to our kitties. For this pattern, I used the Premier Parfait Chunky. This is the Chanel yarn in toffee and in cream. We're going to go through the supplies and then we'll get started. We're going to get started. We're going to grab our hook, a stitch marker. Before we crochet, we are going to grab our main color and just cut off about 10 inches of that piece and just set that to the side. Okay, round one has a color change and it also has an extra small bobble, so it can feel a bit tricky, but we're going to go through this slowly. We're going to start out by making a slip knot and chaining six. If you need any help or any videos with that, I have those all listed below. Here's our slip knot, and now we are going to chain six. From here, we're going to make a single crochet in that second chain from the hook, and then we're going to single crochet in each of the next four, just going underneath that little top loop there. So we're going to make our first single crochet in that second chain from the hook, and now we're going to single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to work down the other side of the chains. We're going to cha turn our work. The other side is facing up. In these stitches here, we are going to make a single crochet, an extra small bobble, a single crochet, an extra small bobble, and a single crochet. And we're going to color change. So I'm going to talk you through this. In this first stitch up here, we are going to be making a single crochet. But we also need to color change so we're going to pull our single crochet through and before we pull it all the way through we're going to grab our other color our contrasting color and we are going to attach that to pull through so leave a bit of a tail i'm just going to tug on my other color and i'm going to pull the new color through so that we have our first single crochet but then we have our color for the next stitch now we're going to make an extra small bobble. We're going to go into this stitch here. For an extra small bobble, it's basically two double crochet that we don't finish. And I'm going to talk you through this. We're going to yarn over. We're going to place our hook into that next stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull through. We'll have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over, go through that same stitch again. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. From here, we'll have three loops left. Go ahead and drop that cream and pick up the brown. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So now our extra small bobble's done. Now we need to do a single crochet. So in this next bit here, we're going to make a single crochet. When we pull that through, we're going to stop, we're going to grab our cream. And we're going to finish the stitch with the cream yarn. We're going to make one more extra small bobble. So we're going to yarn over, go into our next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. Then we're going to yarn over, place our hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. We're going to pause. You're going to have three loops on the hook. Go ahead and drop your cream and pick up your brown. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then we're going to end with a single crochet into this last chain space here. So we're going to single crochet and you did it. That was probably one of the hardest rounds. So if you have that, you're golden. 
we're going to place a stitch marker. I like to place mine on the last stitch of the round, but feel free to place it on the first. We end this round with 10 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and just cut off this cream yarn so it doesn't get me all tangled up. For round two, we're going to make a single crochet increase in that first stitch, and we're going to single crochet into the next. We'll repeat that by making another single crochet increase and a single crochet. So we'll just repeat that sequence. So here we're going to start by making our single crochet increase. That's two single crochet in the same stitch. And then we'll move over for a single crochet. Here's another single crochet increase. Move over for a single crochet. Then we have another single crochet increase. Single crochet. Here we have an increase. Move over for a single crochet. Then we have our last increase. And then we'll end with a single crochet. At the end of round two, we have 15 stitches. We're going to change our stitch marker. For round three, we are going to make a single crochet increase, and then we're going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches, and we'll repeat that sequence for a total of five times. So here is our increase to single crochet in the same stitch. Move over for a single crochet. This is one. Move over for our second single crochet. Now we have another increase. Single crochet in each of the next two. Here's one and two. Then we have an increase. Single crochet in each of the next two. Here's one. Move over two. We have another increase. Single crochet one and two. And then we have another increase. And then end with a single crochet in each of the next two. At the end of round three, we're gonna have 20 stitches. You can change your stitch marker. For round four, we are going to make an increase in the first stitch, single crochet in each of the next three stitches, and we'll repeat that for a total of five times. Here is our first increase. Single crochet in each of the next three. Here is another increase. Single crochet in each of the next three. Here is our third increase, three of five. We're going to single crochet in each of the next three. Here is our fourth increase. Single crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then here's our fifth and final increase. End with a single crochet in each of the next three. So at the end of round four, we have 25 stitches. We're going to change our stitch marker. For round five, we are going to be making the ears. So I suggest grabbing six stitch markers. And if you don't have stitch markers, you can grab bobby pins or, or just something to keep your spot. But we are going to mark the back loop only of stitch five and stitch 12. So go ahead and count and find stitch five and then count and find stitch 12. And just mark the back loops only with your stitch marker. Once you have those marked, we are going to continue on. So for round five, we are going to single crochet in each of the first four stitches. So this is three, and then this is four. In the front loop only of the marked stitch, we are going to make a single crochet. We're going to chain two, and then we're going to make another single crochet. 
and we are going to mark those single crochet stitches. So go ahead and go under the front loop, make a single crochet. We're gonna pause here and grab our stitch marker and just mark that stitch. We're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna make a single crochet into that same front loop only. And then you're gonna grab your stitch marker and mark that stitch. From here, we're gonna single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're gonna repeat the same thing, single crochet, single crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet. So grab your stitch markers, go under that front loop, make a single crochet, we're gonna mark that stitch. This will make sense in the next round too. We're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna go under that front loop only again, the same stitch, and make a single crochet. Go ahead and mark that stitch. We're gonna single crochet in the next 13 stitches. You can single crochet till you get to the stitch marker. I know this seems really wacky <laughs> and it'll all make sense, but especially with this yarn, I don't like to be figuring out which stitch to go into. So using the stitch markers really helps to have to not think while you're crocheting, especially with this yarn. So it's super helpful. Okay, at the end of round five, we're gonna have 25 stitches. Okay, round six is also another tricky one because we are doing bobble stitches and we are changing colors and we have these funny stitch markers. So we're just gonna go through this slowly. Okay, to start round six, we are gonna single crochet in the next 19 stitches. So here we're gonna do four to start. So we have single crochet one, two, three, and four. We're gonna ignore all the stitches, including the ones in the stitch marker, and we're gonna go into that back loop that we marked. So go under that stitch. This is single crochet five. You can take out the stitch marker. And now we still wanna ignore those blue stitches, so we're gonna go into the stitch next to the stitch marker. Kinda of have to reach your hook over and get it in there, and then this is single crochet six. So we have seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Now we're gonna ignore all those stitches in, with, within the stitch marker. We're gonna go into the pink one. This is 12. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna reach over to the next one. That's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And now this is our 19th single crochet. We're gonna slow it down because we're gonna change colors before we finish our single crochet. So go ahead and grab your cream or whatever contrasting color you're using. You can connect it however you'd like. I, in Amagurumi, sometimes I like to just make a little knot, make a loose one just so you can pull the yarn down, and then you can tighten it up at the, at the bottom. This just kind of makes it easier to hold on to. So we're gonna finish that single crochet with the new yarn. Now we are going to be making a front loop bobble. So we're gonna be working into the front loop only, and the bobble is essentially five double crochet that we don't finish. So here we're gonna yarn over, go under the front loop, this is one. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, this is our second time going under the same stitch. Pull through two. Yarn over, this is going under the third time. Go through two loops on the hook. Yarn over, this is our fourth time. Yarn over, go through two loops on the hook. Then yarn over, this is our fifth time under the same stitch, it gets a little tough. Yarn over, pull through two. Now you'll have six loops on the hook. Go ahead and drop the cream and pick up the brown 
and finish off your stitch by yarning over and pulling through. We're going to single crochet in the next two. So we have single crochet one, and on the second one, we're gonna color change. So here's single crochet two. Don't finish your stitch. We're gonna grab the cream. We're gonna pull that through, and then we're gonna do one more bobble. So we're gonna do it into the front loop only. Yarn over, go underneath the front loop only. This is our first time. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Then yarn over, this is our second time. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, this is our third time. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, this is our fourth time. Yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over. We're going to go underneath that same front loop only. Things are getting tangled here. I know this gets tough, this last one. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two. When you have six loops left on the hook, we're going to drop our cream, grab our brown, and pull that through. We're going to end by making a single crochet in the next two stitches. So here's one and two. And two. So from here, you can pop out your bobble stitches. And those are our two little feet. And that is the last of the color changing. Woohoo! So there we go. We're kind of looking like a kitty more, kind of not. Uh, we're going to change our stitch marker. We have 25 stitches. You can go ahead and take out those blue ear stitch markers as well. Okay, we're going to do one more round and then we're going to do all the fun stuff and give our kitty a face. For round seven, we are just going to single crochet in the next 25 stitches. Thanks for joining me on this crochet along, you guys. I did not mean to not post for like, what is it, August, September, October, like two and a half months, no, three months. Um, after the Christmas in July, I kind of lost my groove. I needed a tiny bit of a break, but exciting news is they have been working on my website. So I'm trying to make the pattern page a little bit easier to read, and that's taking a, a bit of time, and then hopefully I can get my whole site revamped. So that's been kind of like the, on the forefront, is just getting that all set. I'm hoping to have it, at least the pattern pages, redone before the holidays so we'll see how it goes okay so we reached the end of round seven we still have 25 stitches we're going to change our stitch marker and then go ahead and grab another stitch marker because we're going to do a few things and we don't want to lose our working yarn we're going to embroider on the nose i used a piece of black worsted weight yarn but if you don't have that go ahead and feel free to use any yarn that you do have for this yarn, I did notice that when I was trying to embroider on these things, I had to use the thinner needle because the yarn needle was just too thick. I went ahead and added this black yarn. I made a few knots on the end and I did use one of those sharp embroidery needles. So all we're going to do is go up through one side of the little cream bobble and then just reach it over to the other side to make a little nose. You can do this in pink as well if you'd like. I just stuck with the black. Okay, once you have your nose, you can just go up through the middle. I like to start at the bottom first. Pull that stitch up and then you can just place it right behind that little piece of your nose. Okay, once you're happy with your little nose, I just like to make a knot on the inside. So I'm gonna grab a little piece of yarn there. I'm gonna pull that through. And then once I have a little loop, I'm gonna go behind the loop to make a knot. Okay, I'm gonna cut off that black yarn because I'm gonna need that for later. Go ahead and grab your 14 millimeter safety eyes. We are going to place those above where our nose is so it's about between round two and three and then i like to leave four stitches open in between so i'm just gonna kind of place it here above the cream 
I'm going to count four stitches and see where the other one lands, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, that looks good. It's kind of right where I want it. The one eye tends to look a little bit higher, and I think that's just because of the nature of crocheting in the round. So I wouldn't worry about it if it looks a tad bit higher. From here, I want to add the sad eyes. So if you want the sad eyes, <laughs> like the really, like really sad eyes, you're going to go ahead and grab a piece of cream yarn. I'm going to use that sharp embroidery needle again. This makes it a lot easier, to, especially for the eye part. Go ahead and use worsted if you want to use a fluffier yarn, feel free. I'm going to make a few knots on the end. So for the cream, I like to start on the bottom. I'm going to go down the middle and just move over a tiny bit. Because it does, the yarn kind of gets pulled in. So that looks, that looks good. I'm going to pull that through. And then I like to go down the middle of the eye and then just move a tad bit over on that end as well. And then we'll just kind of pull that down. You can make a knot and start fresh on the other side, or you can just use the same yarn and pull it over. You just have to be careful because if you pull too tight, you're going to be pulling the other side as well. Make sure to give yourself some slack. See how this one is kind of pulling? I want to make sure that that eye has slack on it and the other one as well. Okay, from here, I'm going to just flip this inside out and I'm going to grab a little bit of a stitch. I'm going to pull that through. Once I have a loop, I'm going to go behind the loop and make a knot. Okay, we can grab the backs of our safety eyes and we can add those. When I add the backs, I only like to go down one of those little rods or little clicks, whatever you want to call it. I don't like it to be too tight around the yarn. So I just leave that be. You can always tuck that cream yarn in behind your eye, or you could even add like a little bit of fabric glue on the edge of the brown yarn and just let it kind of dry. Okay, one last thing before we move on. If you want to do this, you don't have to. I didn't do them on all of mine and they still look really cute. You can grab that yarn that you had earlier. I'm gonna cut it into two pieces. You're going to add an end to a needle. And if you guys haven't used these needles for the Chanel yarn, yeah, I know I talk about them on every video, but they are so amazing. And I think it's only Susan Bates who makes them, like the brand. So I haven't seen anything else like it, but I will link it down below. Okay, so you're going to add one side through one stitch of your ear and then make sure that you move over and go through a totally different stitch. So it's a little tough to get through. So just get that yarn through. And then you're going to make a knot on the inside of the head. That just helps to kind of pull the ear down and keep it that way. So you can repeat the same thing on the other side. So here's our finished face. We're looking good. So now we're going to continue crocheting so that we can get this body done. For round eight, we're going to make a single crochet in each of the first four stitches, and then we're going to make five decreases. So here is our single crochet one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to start and make a decrease. I like to make an invisible decrease, and if you don't know how to do that, I have a separate video. We're going to make five decreases. So here is one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to finish up by making a single crochet in each of the next 11 stitches. Ten 
and 11. At the end of round 8, we're going to have 20 stitches. For round 9, we're going to single crochet in each of the first 4. And then we are going to make an increase in the next 5. Here is single crochet 1, 2, 3, and 4. And now we're going to make an increase in each of the next 5 stitches. Here's our first increase. Here's our second. Here's our third. Here's our fourth. And our fifth. We're going to also end this round by single crocheting in each of the next 11 stitches, and I'll let you guys count. Okay, at the end of round nine, we're gonna have 25 stitches. From here, we are just gonna stuff a tiny bit for the head, because as we continue crocheting, it gets a little bit harder to reach there. I'm just gonna grab only this handful and just shape my head a little bit. Okay, once you're good, we are going to single crochet for round 10 through 12. And I'm just gonna show you how I like to mark my single crochet round just so I can keep track. We're going to do a few single crochets and then I'm just going to grab a stitch marker and I'm going to place it horizontally on one of the stitches and that just helps me keep track of knowing that it's round 10 and then I'll do round 11 and round 12. Go ahead and continue single crocheting all the way around. You'll have 25 stitches, crochet round 10, 11, and 12, and we will meet back. Okay, we did round 10, 11, and 12. We still have 25 stitches. You can stuff if you'd like a little bit more at this point, but I'm gonna continue on before I do that. For round 13, we're gonna make a decrease in the first stitch. We're gonna single crochet in each of the next three, and we'll repeat that sequence. So here is our first decrease. Single crochet in each of the next three. Here's one, two, and three. Then we're going to make another decrease. Single crochet in each of the next three. Then we have another decrease. Single crochet in the next three. We have another decrease. Single crochet in the next three. We have a decrease. Single crochet in the last three. We're going to change our stitch marker. We have 20 stitches. For round 14, we are going to make a decrease and then we're going to single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Here is a decrease. Single crochet in each of the next two. Decrease. single crochet in the next two and then I'll let you count a decrease single crochet in the next two.
At the end of round 14, we're gonna have 15 stitches. Go ahead and add a stitch marker onto your working yarn so you don't lose it. And then this is probably one of our last chances to get a good stuff in there. So go ahead and grab some stuffing. We do lots of smushing when we stuff. I'm not a big over stuffer. Um, I like to make my little hole in the middle and add some stuffing and then do lots of smushing as I, as I add the stuffing. Here I think I'm good. I might add a little bit more later, but I'm going to try to finish up the next round. For round 15, we have a decrease and then a single crochet. And so we're gonna repeat that all the way around. So we're gonna start with a decrease. Single crochet in the next stitch. Then we have a decrease. And then a single crochet. And I'm gonna let you count your decrease single crochet. Okay, we made our last decrease. And here is our last single crochet. At the end of round 15, we're gonna have 10 stitches. I'm just gonna stuff this a tad bit more. I'm gonna change my stitch marker. And now this is our last round, round 16. We're gonna make a decrease and we're gonna do that five times around. Here is our first decrease. Here's our second. Our third. Our fourth. And here's our fifth. Just gonna take out my stitch marker to make it easier. Go ahead and leave a long piece of yarn. We're gonna fasten off by yarning over and pulling all the way through. And then you can place that yarn into a yarn needle. So we're gonna close this kitty up. From here, I have my fastened off piece here. And now I'm gonna count back five, two, three, four, and five. So I'm gonna go behind the front loop only and pull down. I'm gonna find stitch number two, three, four, and five. From here, you want to pull lightly because you can break your yarn. So we're just going to pull and then you're going to place your hook back through kind of where that hole was. It's hard to see, but you can just place your needle, not your hook, your needle through and then weave that yarn and give it a little bit of a tug. Don't pull too hard, but enough so that it pulls the back in. Weave in your yarn, and then you can cut off the extra piece and take out that stitch marker. So we are almost done. We are going to add a tail. So in the back here, I'm gonna add a tail, but instead of going straight up, straight across, I'm gonna move over just a little bit because I wanna make my tail and then I wanna attach it. So I'm gonna start here at a slight angle. Go ahead and grab your same color yarn. And we are just going to attach the yarn and pull it through. Leave yourself a good amount of tail because you want a piece, a good piece of yarn to weave through your, your kitty. We're going to chain 21. So from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through, and then just chain 21. We are gonna make a half double crochet in that second chain from the hook, and then we're gonna a half double crochet all the way down the chain. So we're gonna half double crochet all the way down the chain. I like to half double crochet in that second chain from the hook because it gives the tip of the tail like a little bit of a curl. 
the further down the chain we get, the harder it gets because it feels like super awkward, but just keep on going. We are almost done. Okay, so we have one more half double crochet, and then here is our last half double crochet. Okay, from here, we're gonna go into the stitch. I'm actually just gonna go move over here. And we are going to make a slip stitch. So pull that through and then pull it through again. Go ahead and leave a long piece of yarn. And then I'm just gonna fasten off. You don't technically need to fasten off here, but I'm going to just for extra a bit of security. And then we're gonna weave both of those pieces into our cat. One last thing you can do is, if you want to be kind of funny, <laughs> you can add an X uh, at the back of the body right underneath the tail. So I'm just going to add in that yarn that I had left over and I'm going to use my embroidery needle once again. So I'm just going to go up through a stitch. And then I'm going to go down the opposite way. I'm going to pull up so it's one side of my X and then I'm just going to finish the other side. This doesn't have to be perfect, it's just kind of funny. After this step we are just going to make the whiskers and then we are absolutely In order to make the whiskers, I'm gonna take this worsted weight yarn that has the four strands and I'm gonna divide them into two. Once you get the yarn unraveled, you're just gonna add both ends to your yarn needle. So you'll have a loop on one end and both ends in there. Go ahead and grab a piece of the yarn, of the cream yarn. You can pull that up. Just hold on to your loop so your loop doesn't go through. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is put your fingers through the loop and just grab onto that yarn. You'll just tighten that up, just be careful as you do it. And then you can trim down your whisker. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. That's it, you guys, you did it. Color changes, bobbles, extra small bomb bobbles. You did it all. So I'm so proud of you. I hope you guys love your sad kitty. Let me know if you are keeping it or if you're making it for somebody else. Cause I always like to know you guys make things for yourselves. I know it's super hard for us crocheters to do that sometimes. So let me know in the comments below. Please check out my channel for more no sew crochet patterns, all these amigurumi patterns. I even have some ornament patterns, so check that out. And also go to yarnsociety.com for any free patterns.